Hello and welcome back. I haven't done one of these videos in months and I have missed it dearly. But I hope to be back for a lot more content and the first thing I need to talk about is something that happened to me while playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey a few months ago. Alright, so after I played through the main story of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which I'll be calling Greeks Gone Wild for short, I started off on the DLC. First off, I thought I'd do the one-off Lost Tales of Greece and then I heard it. Something awful, something dreadful that Cassandra the Eagle Bearer said. I unfortunately don't have it recorded because recording Greeks Gone Wild was stuck sing on my four-year-old computer and I only got my upgrade two weeks ago, unfortunately. As soon as I heard this dreadful proof of Cassandra's psychopathic tendencies, however, I knew that I would have to talk about it. It's a big problem, everyone. That said, after I recorded it, I realized this issue needed some framing and as I've wanted to talk about the story of Greeks Gone Wild for a while, for ages in fact, I knew now was the time. So get ready for Philip Magnus's remarkable recollection of the Eagle Bearer's journey. Our story starts in Kefalonia, the island that our protagonist Cassandra has made a home of. It all begins, as most things in life do, with a bunch of debt collectors showing up, asking for money that your most annoying friend owes the before Christ version of the Mafia. From that point on, all it takes is six hours of basic gameplay mechanic introductions to get to the point where Cassandra shoves a fake eye in a ghost's behind. Said fake eye is, of course, the eye of the master criminal of Kefalonia, a brutish guy who goes by the name of the Cyclops. He eventually gets stabbed. Spoilers. As a side note, I find it really personally reassuring to know that somewhere in ancient Greece there walks a goat with a fake eye in its butt. Next up. Some shady fellow comes around asking Cassie, yes I call her Cassie now, to kill a Spartan general by the name of Gasp. <gasps> it's my daddy! Well, not mine. Mine works at the bank. He ain't ordering no one but me to bring him a beer, but it's Cassandra's dad, Nikolaos. The one who, second Gasp, watched as Cassandra's baby brother, Alexius, got thrown off a mountain. He kept watching after Cassandra shoved the priest that threw Alexius off and fell to her supposed dead herself. Talk about child sacrifice heavy! At any rate, Cassandra, now captaining her own ship by the name of the Adrestia, heads off to see good old dad. On the way, she's stopped by Ted Gasp, a Spartan named Stentor, who identifies himself as Nicolas's son, making him widow stepbro. In order to make certain Cassie is working on the part of the greatest Spartan cause, which is not, probably, Stentor initiates, yay, yet more tutorial-ish quests which present the conquest mechanic of this game. Or represented because the actual game started with a conquest battle in which you played as Leonidas. Yes, that same guy who was played by Russell Crowe. No, was it? No. No, it wasn't. By that guy who looks like Russell Crowe in 300. And yes. Uh, several dozen murders, and one Spartan Athenian battle later, we finally got to having the Spartans trust all nice and tidy in our hearts, or in theirs. Proudest moment in Megalis, not kicking stepdaddy off a gigantic cliff, Spartan style. Moment I regretted the most in Megalis, uh, not kicking stepdaddy off a gigantic cliff, Spartan style. Huh, suppose there's a little something in there about that choice which keeps bugging me. Either way, Nikolaus feels remorse, gives me some clues as to where I could find my mum, who is, gasp, alive, but has abandoned her no good stand and watches kids get dropped off a cliff, husband, and big gasp, he's not even my real dad. It makes sense now, Nikolaus next forfeits his position as General of Sparta in order to go on a spiritual quest. I, occupying Cassie's shoes, decide to try my luck and cash in the check to his head. Of course, Shady McShays, who sent me to kill Daddy-O, decides it's a great idea to offer me to kill my mum as well, now that I've supposedly rid myself of Daddy, and then gets to try me killed via masked soldiers for no reason whatsoever other than me telling him to go flip himself off. Running around focused now, and meeting a historical figure, Hello allows me to realize that, hey, the whole Greek world is manipulated by cultists, and that Shady McShades, now dead, was one of said cultists. Are you thinking that they might have a catchy name? Good, because they do, the Cult of Cosmos. Sneaking into a meeting of said cult, I come across some interesting information. The cult wants my poor mumsy dead, sucks, but they want dead the leader of Athens, the, that brilliant shining democratic polis, even worse. 
If you've paid any attention to history class, you'd know that this leader is Pericles, Greek rock star, and yeah, that's about it. He was great with the guitar. Biggest takeaway from that cultist meeting, that baby bro of mine, name of Alexius, whom a priest threw off a cliff, surprise, he's alive and he's a homicidal maniac, goes by the name of Deimos now. Figured out who I was, let me go incognito, killed a poor, wrong place, wrong time, cultist in my place. That's my baby bro! <laughs> Oh boy. Off to Athens, meeting with the big P, Pericles himself, getting entangled in the wickedness of democracy. Local politics, meeting an obvious cultist if I've ever seen one, and not being able to stab I mean stop him, due to it being too early in the story, was annoying. I also met Pericles' wife as past year. Not as it must as much. Oh, and Socrates and a bunch of important philosophers and playwrights get involved. You know how those old coots are, loving that sweet democracy, not loving the militaristic, jingoistic, military cultist guy whose name no one cares about. Following a number of events, too numerous to recollect, a play strikes Athens, Pericles gets sick, and Damus murders him. Damus murders him! Oh, wait, I was there. And Ubisoft officially ups the ante, turning this into a proper Greek tragedy. Now, with child death. Uh, Phoebe, who's been Cassandra's friend and a major supporting character, someone who looked up to her and whom Cassandra cared about and loved, is also dead. Yes. That got real, really, really unexpectedly quickly. On a serious note, this is where the game went from pleasant pastime to this excellent story that I was all of a sudden 100% invested in. Once Pericles got skewered by baby bro, it was time to take this party on the road and go and meet Mumsy Dearest. Aspasia, who is totally not evil, and Cassandra, who is totally not a self-righteous cannibal, decide it's finally time to go see Mummy Dearest. Cue the heartwarming reunion, Mum and daughter are back, and it's good and wonderful, and of course Mum is the leader of a bloody island in conflict, a gang orchestrated by the cult of Cosmos. Don't these guys have anything better to do than mess with my family? Right. What follows is 40 hours of murdering cultists, losing yet more friends to cultists, trusting all the wrong people and discovering Atlantis, and my real 200-year-old dad. Wait, what? Oh well, skip! And this, dear viewer, is exactly how much backstory you need in order to understand the following minute and a half, as recorded by me in a state of pure and utter and adulterated despair. Prepare yourselves, what I reveal will shock you to your very core. Hello and welcome, and I have a very important, very key question for you today. Is Cassandra, the eagle bearer of Assassin's Creed Odyssey fame, a cannibal? Now, before you turn off this video, listen to me very carefully, listen very close, this is just going to take a minute. But as I was doing this side quest and hunting deer at the behest of one of two brothers in a Corinthian side quest, the brother is called Likonos, I came across a bandit camp. Now, naturally, because I am a good Mystios, I... what I did was I, I killed the bandits. And as soon as I killed the captain, what Cassandra said was very, very, very unnerving. And what she says is, I quote, as she pulled her blade out of this captain this uh, villainous, evil son of a gun, or whatever they had, son of an arrow, in ancient Greece. What Cassandra said was, this should be plenty of meat for Lykinos' dinner. I wrote those words down, and I am worried. I am really worried. Has Cassandra the eagle bear been eating human meat all this time? What does that mean for her quest against the Cult of Cosmos? Does that mean that she no longer has the moral justification to take on these villainous, chaotic cultists? Find out in the next episode of Cassandra the Eagle Bearer, Cannibal Mystios. Um, uh, uh, this video has been sponsored by, uh, uh, Loot crate, they are fantastic, a fantastic service, let me tell you, and uh, I'm definitely not fighting for bankruptcy or anything like that. Bye!